Good morning and welcome to Mission Control Houston and the International Space Station Update Hour. We're here with the International Space Station Flight Control Team inside the Space Station Flight Control Room, where Flight Director Judd Freeling is uh, leading the team with, the help, with help from Capcom Anna Fisher. On board the space station, three members of the Expedition 34 crew are more than halfway through their day and currently orbiting 258 miles above the coast of Burma. They are uh, Commander Kevin Ford and Flight Engineer Tom Marshburn of NASA, Russian Flight Engineers Oleg Novitsky of Guinea Tarelkin and Roman Romaninko, and Canadian Space Agency Flight Engineer Chris Hadfield. Ford, Novitsky, and Terelkin have been at the space station since October when their Soyuz TMA-06M vehicle docked to the Russian Poisk module. They are now working on their 120th day at the space station and their 122nd day in space. And they were joined in December by Marshburn, Hadfield, and Romaninko who docked their Soyuz TMA-07M to the station's Rosvet module on December 21st. They are on their 65th day in space and their 63rd at the station. The crew has quite a mix of activities on its agenda for the day. Commander Kevin Ford and his fellow Soyuz crewmates, Oleg Novitsky and Evgeny Terelkin, spent some time in their Soyuz this morning checking out the special seats they'll be sitting in on their return to Earth on March 15th. Soyuz seats are especially designed for each individual crew member to provide them the best cushion possible for their landing in Kazakhstan. Ford also spent some time putting away the In Space 3 experiment, which wrapped up on Wednesday, and getting the space station's combustion integrated rack prepared for an upcoming series of experiments. Chris Hadfield and Tom Marshburn, meanwhile, both spent much of their morning working through some regular checks of the station's environment, making sure that it's healthy for the crew members. Hadfield took some samples off of various station surfaces and the station's air, while Marshburn monitored the noise level on board and took water samples. Marshburn also had some time set aside to get the station's light micros microscopy module set up for an upcoming run of the Advanced Colloids Experiment, which could provide important data that's not available on Earth and give us a better understanding of crystallization, production quality control, and phase separation, or shelf life and product collapse. Back on the ground, the flight controllers are continuing to work through the software update that caused a loss of communication with the crew on Tuesday. Since Tuesday, everything's been going smoothly with that work, and yesterday the team here was able to catch up on the work originally scheduled for Tuesday. And today they're moving on with the loading of the final command and control computer with the new software. The transition should be wrapped up by Saturday. In addition, the team here on the ground has been preparing for a reboost that the station is scheduled to perform tomorrow at 4.34 a.m. Central Time. That adjustment to the station's altitude will use the Progress 49 thrusters, firing them for 4 minutes and 37 seconds, and that's going to increase the station's perigee, or the low point of its orbit, by 1.3 miles and leave the station in a 257 by 252 mile orbit putting them in place for Ford, Novitsky's, and Tarelkin's undocking in March, as well as preparing the station for the single-day launch docking schedule for the crew that will be taking their place. That's what's been going on in space today, and this is Mission Control Houston.